What's going on? <laughs> Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. And today, we're going to learn the best exercise for improve, improving your perception of 3D space. And that is by drawing cubes, lots of cubes in every angle. And this isn't anything earth shattering. This is what's tried and true. It's a method that works for improving your perception of three dimensional space. And it will work for you and it will work for anyone. As long as you start slow, you learn it and then you start applying it slowly, you will be able to get it. I want you to gain an intuitive understanding first and then you'll be able to do it in any angle. And this is the basis for everything. So if you're trying to draw, paint, whatever it is, animals, landscapes, cityscapes, people, this is the basis for everything. It will help you with everything. Now let's get to it. Okay, so I want us to take a very practical look at boxes and cubes. Uh, and I want to introduce you to an exercise that I do very, very frequently, almost in any drawing uh, session uh, that helps me to warm up and, and to develop my understanding of three dimensionality. So first, real life. Let's look at a real cube. I have shown you this in a recent live stream, but let's just examine a few simple concepts, okay? Now, I will say one thing, my goal here is to develop your or intuitive understanding so that you don't have to always go by the rules and use a ruler and all of that. I want you to be able to do these things by understanding the core principle. So let's get to it. We have a cube here. If we're looking at it straight on, we're looking at it flatly, okay? We don't see its depth. We don't see its... Um, the only thing we see is this one side. Now, what happens when I rotate it? We're at the same spot, right? But if I rotate it halfway, we're seeing both the right uh, side and the left side. Now, if I will continue doing that, notice what happens. As one side is more dominant, when I rotate, this left side starts showing up and look at how it takes over and slowly the dominant side disappears, right? So that's kind of how, when you rotate a cube, that's what happens. Now, I wanna show you one more thing. What happens when we tilt it? This is actually the exact same thing, only top to bottom rather than left to right, okay? So when I'm doing this action, it's exactly the same as doing this. We're exposing two sides of the cube. Now, where it gets more complex is when we start rotating it, tilting it back and forth like that, exposing the third side. Okay, now look at what we have here. We're looking at the cube dead on, this is the center. Uh, this is actually the point that is closest to us. Okay, and that's important, remember that for later. Now, these three sides show up identical. Uh, in a way that's identical. And these three angles are actually uh, even. So we have 120 degrees, another 120 degrees, another 120, a total of 360, okay? Now, as we tilt and move the cube, look what happens to, for example, this side and this side as we tilt it back. They flatten all the way to uh, creating a straight line, right? And if I tilt it back down, they start to, again, change the angle. Okay, the angle changes. And as we rotate, we see more of one side, less of another side, and so on. And we have all sorts of options. Seeing barely a part of the top, seeing barely the two bottom planes, right? We can just look at it straight on as we've seen. We can rotate it a bit and see a bit of one plane. We can rotate it a bit more, see a bit more of these two, which is exactly the same as this, right? You see one dominantly and then two small ones, same like this. It's the same thing, only rotated a different way. So I want you to start developing just an intuitive understanding that there are three planes that can be visible a total, right? Unless it's transparent. Uh, and every time we will see one, two, or three, depending on the position of the cube, right? So I can show you two like this and then tilt it back and you'll see three. And it's the same as if I tilt it to the side and tilt it like that, okay? And these all will take different uh, spaces and the less we see of one, the more we'll see of the other, okay? So far, so good. Now, let's talk a bit about how this cube exists in space. So for that, we're gonna draw a very quick scene. I'm just gonna use a pen because I want to um, get this with a sense of immediacy. And what happens with a cube in space is something very interesting. We're not gonna go too deep into perspective, but I want you to take a look at this. We have this kind of a structure, okay? And we were gonna drop it later on. So don't worry, we're not, again, we're not gonna rely on perspective in this one. I just want to show you how it exists in space. Okay, so this is a cube in space. And look at what happens here. Every set of parallel lines 
ends up converging to a vanishing point. And this is something I've shown you many times before, okay? So what's the key takeaway that I want you to take from this? That these parallel lines fan. They preserve a pattern of fanning. They, the angle flattens, okay? And that's something to pay attention to. So if I were to draw one side of the cube, and then I want to add the top, this line will fan out a bit. It's not gonna be parallel, it's gonna fan out and expose more of the, and, and we'll show some of the top side, okay? Now, we're, we're gonna get to the exercise in just one second, but I wanna show you something. If you're looking at the cube from above, it's gonna be under the horizon line, which is right here. But if you're looking at it from below, the cube is above the horizon line. And that's a very complex subject. Basically, the horizon line indicates where our point of view is. So anything above it is above us. Everything below it is below us. Okay, keep it simple for now. So we have this kind of a thing here. Got to make sure that these lines converge somewhat accurately to the vanishing point. Let's actually make it a little bigger. And look at what we've got here. So we have... Um, Let's use this set of lines. So we have this line and that line. And remember, you don't have to draw all of this, but you have to remember they converge. They're not fully parallel. And then we have this set of lines. Now look at what we've got here. We essentially drew a cube that is above us. We're looking at its bottom plane. Now if I were to, and this is the top plane, right? Now, if I were to equate this to this cube, if we're looking at it from below, we're gonna see the top plane, like this, and if we're looking at it from above, we're gonna see the bottom plane, like that, okay? Now, perspective is very complex. There are ways of measuring in space, making sure that these are all equal lines. So if you're actually gonna draw a cube accurately, there are ways of doing that, but I want us to develop our intuitive understanding of it. So let's, let me show you what I mean. Here's the cube and it's pointing straight at us, meaning this is all 120 degree, 120, 120. Let's see how we can draw it intuitively. You're gonna start with the corner that is closer to you always, okay? So we have this corner and it's the closest to us. Now we'll divide this imaginary circle into 120 degrees. So we have this, we have that, and we're gonna try being as accurate as we can. What you wanna imagine is basically slicing a pizza in thirds, okay? So if this was a pizza, you're slicing it in perfect thirds, right? So we got this line, we have this line, and this line, if we got it accurately, this is 120 degrees, 120, 120. Of course, there will be minor inaccuracies, but that's fine. Now, all we have to remember is convergence. This line and that line, they converge to an imaginary point. So tilt it a bit, flatter and just do this, this kind of thing, right? Same goes for this line and this line. Tilt it a bit. Imagine how they have to meet somewhere very far off, okay? Then tilt this line as well. And then what you end up doing is connecting. Now, the same thing happens here with what's called the third vanishing point, indicating height. These lines also converge. Now, the best way to imagine and understand that third vanishing point is actually by rotating our view. So let me show you what I'm doing, okay? All I'm gonna do is rotate this cube like that. And what did we get here? See this? See that? Now this converges to a different vanishing point like that. And this is our third vanishing point showing the height. So this is the top now. This is the top of the cube, right? And this is the, the two sets of vanishing, other vanishing points. So basically, the third vanishing point, despite being confusing to some people, it's actually the exact same thing. You can imagine it as a different horizon line. So if you rotate it, you'll get that. Right here, one of these turned into the third vanishing point. So one, two, three. Okay, now let's forget about all of that because I want to develop your intuitive understanding. So let's talk intuitively. That's the part where this video becomes extremely important because this is something I have shown you a few times before. So let's take this cube of ours and imagine that we're gonna rotate it to the left like so. Okay, so we're basically taking this and we're rotating it to the left. That's all we're doing. Look at what happens to this side. We slowly see more of it, right? Look at what happens to this side. It slowly disappears. And look at what happens to the top plane. The top plane doesn't change too much because we're not tilting up and down, 
but the shape of that square in space does change, and that's something we need to take into consideration. So, if we rotate it, remember, where do we want to start? With the point that's closest to us. This point is still closest to us. So look at what happens to the angle. So we have this point, let's call it A. So here's A once again. Now look at what happens to these two angles. This one goes a little more, is it obtuse, I believe, flatter, and this is more acute. It goes sharper if you compare it to, let's say, a vertical or horizontal line. So this goes, instead of going like that, it goes, and I can actually draw it on this one. So let me show you here. This becomes flatter, right? And this becomes sharper towards this direction, right? This goes here, and of course, I told you we'll start from the from this corner, so I can actually continue. This line here goes to the left and becomes flatter, so it's flatter like that. And look at what we did here. We're just all we have to do now is connect, 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 and we've successfully rotated the cube. We just rotated it, right? So here's what I want you to be able to do. And we're gonna start fresh. That's, that's this page I finished. We're gonna start fresh here, okay? I want you to be able to rotate that cube in your imagination. One good way of doing that is to first get started with what I've shown you, 120 degrees, okay? And try and, and keep the degrees as equal as you can. Drop this here, drop this there. We got a basic cube, okay? Now, let me zoom in a bit. I want you to see everything as I fill in the page. So, this cube. Now, imagine we're rotating it to the left. So, let's start with the corner closest to us. That line becomes flatter, this one. That line goes into the distance a little more, and it's shorter now because it goes away from us. Uh, this line flattens accordingly, so it's it's kind of it stays similar in this example, but it's it may even go a bit towards the right. And then all we have to do is connect. So converge. Don't make this fully parallel. Converge it a bit. Converge this a bit. Converge this a bit. Converge this a bit, because this is still the corner that's closest to us. And converge these two. Converge these two. And you've got a cube that's successfully rotated. Now let's rotate it even more, okay? Or rather, let's tilt it this time. So we're gonna tilt it this way. So if we're starting here, we're gonna do this, okay? So what's the corner that's closest to us? If we're gonna go from this to this, it is still this corner, okay? It's closer to us than that, this one. So let's start with that same corner, corner A, as we like to call it, and look at what happens as we tilt. This line stays pretty similar, but it goes down a bit, right? So I already moved it down a bit. Now look at what happens to this line. From being sh pretty long, it goes shorter, moving away from us. So a shorter line. And then look at what happens to this line. Because we tilt it in space like that, it goes even shorter than it was. So very short. Now all we have to do and this has to be longer. All we have to do is connect again. So slightly converge these two, slightly converge these two, slightly converge these two, parallel lines. Same here, same here, same here. So we slightly tilted it. Let's tilt it some more, okay? Same corner. This goes even flatter. This shows a lot more of, because we're tilting it yet again, and this line shortens significantly. So look at what happens here, connecting all the different sides, we tilted it some more. We can tilt it even more, let's do that. Almost completely flat, almost all of it showing. I can even finish that top lane. This is super short and we can barely see any of that plane, you see? So we essentially took the cube, rotated it like that, took it, rotated, tilted. And that's what you want to work on, okay? Now, what again, what helps me is to start with a pose I know well. So let's do another one. Let's look at it from below, which is exactly the same thing. So let's start with the corner that's closest to us from below. Which one is it? This one, okay? It's the same thing, not this one this time. Look at it moving away from us, this one. So corner moving away from us, we're gonna drop 
120 degrees for everything. 120, 120, 120 approximately, right? And keep them at equal lengths too. So this has to be equal, as equal as possible, right? Maybe until here and then converge. Don't go completely parallel, close it off a bit, just a bit. Don't go completely parallel, close it off just a bit. Just a bit, just a bit, just a bit. Just a bit, and you've got a cube looking from below. Let's rotate it to the right, okay? Same corner, still the closest to us, A. This line changes angle, becomes flatter. And we see a bit more of it too, because imagine we're rotating, this is gonna become more dominant, this line. And this line moves into the distance, right? So we have this, again, this angle, we're rotating it to the right, so it goes, changes the angle a bit, lowers, right? And then this line stays kind of the same. And then we'll connect, connect, connect. And always when you're doing these lines, think about what's the parallel line to the line I'm currently drawing. So this line here, this is the parallel. So we gotta close it off at an angle. So that somewhere very far to the left, these will connect. Same here, converge, see all of these? lines if we've been successful they they will all meet somewhere there to the left at a very um hypothetical but real point okay and we rotated it a bit right now here's another cool view so let's say we're looking at it head on right so we have this we're seeing two sides of the cube right like that now let's rotate it to the left. What's gonna happen? We're gonna see more of this, less of that. So this angle goes flatter like that. I can actually do it pretty well intuitively. These two are flat. Now to compensate for that, these angles here need to go sharper. And we're seeing less of them. We rotated it to the left. Let's look at a very extreme angle, almost from the front. These are gonna be almost parallel, few, fewer tilting, and we barely see a bit of that side, okay? We rotated it successfully. Now let's lift it up. So we are, we're at this angle, lift it up, okay? So to lift it up, which corner is gonna be the closest to us? Let's lift it and check. It's gonna be this one. So we'll start with that. Corner that's closest to us, this line will change angle to this Kind of a thing. This stays pretty short and at an angle like that. Again, just take a look. Take a real quick cube and take a look. See? And this line will become a little shorter because we're essentially moving it away from us now. It was straight ahead in front of us and then we move it away. And then we'll do a little connect the dots. So this goes here, this goes there, this goes here. This goes there, connect these two sides, and voila, we got this one moved a bit. Now I did lose some of the proportions, so it looks a bit more boxy than QB. That's fine, we can fix that. And I want to um, bring up another idea, okay? I've shown you how to converge these lines, right? The parallel lines, they all converge, so they're not perfectly parallel on paper, even though they are in reality. You can even drop that concept and just practice using parallel lines. So let me show you. A theoretical cube that's as far from us as possible will not have that convergence. Um, the reason for that is actually quite simple and I can show you. Let's say we have this horizon line and two vanishing points, right? Now, if we have a cube here at the very distance, look at how insignificant the vanishing points become because these angles are all super similar. So you'll barely have any convergence. Now, if you bring it closer here and you'll have a cube that's a little closer to us, right? that's when it becomes a little more important to show these things. But from far, it's not as important, right? And you can fill in this imaginary space with boxes and cubes and, and you'll see from afar, it just isn't as important, even if it's gonna float in the air, right? The convergence is just not as significant when the cubes are far away from us. So this theoretical cube, let's start from the angle that's closest to us, A, do 120 degree angles. 
and then do parallel lines, just parallel lines. So this is parallel, this is parallel, uh, this is parallel, and I have to really force myself to draw these parallel because I have a habit of converging them because I'm so used to drawing these things in a dynamic manner. And this is kind of exaggeration for dynamism, okay? Usually it's, it's not gonna be as exaggerated as I've shown you so far. But so let's say this is a perfect cube from afar. Uh, there is a name for that, is it isometric? I'm not sure, I think the word is isometric. Um, so it means that all of these lines are uh, supposedly of equal length. This isn't shorter than that, even though it's farther away from us, okay? A perfect isometric cube. Even that you can rotate in space, okay? So do the same thing. If you're gonna rotate it in this direction, right? So we'll start with point A, once again, still closest to us. And this line becomes flatter, okay? This line goes into the distance a bit more, right? And this line stays kind of the same. Now, instead of converging anything here, I'm not gonna converge nothing. So this line is gonna be parallel, this line is gonna be parallel, right? These lines are gonna be parallel. Probably should be a little shorter though. This line is gonna be parallel. This, a bit of a hard angle, but get it parallel, get it parallel. And you got, again, an isometric cube. You can still practice this concept using that kind of a cube, okay? And then later on, you can bring in the convergence, but just notice how much more dynamic this cube feels when you compare it to this, okay? So just something to have in mind there. And that is really the exercise that I do almost every day. I get started and I'll draw a cube and I don't need to set up my uh, horizontal line or anything like that because I get a, I got a good already kind of understanding of it. Uh, and then I'll rotate it a bit and just have fun with it and understand that this is pretty much the basis for everything. If you wanna draw a head, it really helps and I've shown you this in the live stream. It really, really helps to draw a box or a cube and constrain the head within that. Why? Because that makes it clear that this is, let's say, the front plane of the cube. This is the side plane of the head, sorry. So that you know that the things that go here and the things that go on the side plane are different. This is the top plane, right? It's, it becomes a little easier to figure out, okay, this is the line that reaches from the uh, forehead to the chin. And this is the line from the ear, the jawline, right? It gets easier to trap the face inside a box. Same thing if you were looking at a box from below, it's gonna be much, much easier to apply rounded shapes and even rounded principles to that. So that if we're looking at this head from below, you'll look at this nice little shape here and you'll know exactly how to set it up in a way that makes sense. Okay, and I'm kind of winging it now, but hopefully the message goes across. We're looking at this face from below. Okay, so something like that, correct? And this is the side plane. So you know that this is the side. The cube is the basis for everything. You can, and, and not to mention just cylinders, just plain old cylinders. If you wanna better understand cylinders, the cube is a great way to start uh, because what it does is it's very specific. You know where the front is, you know where the top is, you know where the sides are. With a cylinder, you're not as specific. You have no definition for the sides. There is no side. It's just round. There is the, the top and bottom planes and the rounded plane, there's the major axis, the minor axis, and that's it. With a cube, you're as specific as you can. You wanna convey a rib cage in space, you wanna draw it accurately, there you go. You get, you get a box, and that's how you know there is no kind of confusion as to where the front is, where the sides are. There's none of that. You know exactly where everything turns in space, okay? So let's say something like that. Okay, so if you want to be as specific as sometimes necessary to draw accurately, this is the perfect exercise. I hope this makes sense. Let me know if it helps and let's wrap it up. So thank you so, so much for tuning in today. I hope you found this useful. Practice this, do this a hundred times if necessary. The one thing I wanted you to understand is how a cube exists in space. That's the most important thing to do. Get one of these or just any other cube, understand it, and once you understand it, you can draw it. But, but even after you understand it, you won't be able to immediately draw it. You have to really do it carefully a few times and figure out the relationship between all the different elements. Then you will be able to do it properly in one angle. Then you'll be able to do it properly in another one, and another one. And then you'll start connecting the dots and be able to do this in any angle. And this is the basis for everything. 
So I think you're gonna find this one useful. And if you have, well, let me know in a comment down below. The video is burning, here we go. Let me know in a comment down below. Uh, please, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. I have a drawing course and a painting course to solve any of your problems. Check it out in the description box below. I really do appreciate it. I will see you again in another vid real soon.